Good evening, CJ Math students. So tonight we're going to do homework 2.8 using the commuter property of addition uh, to work with basically rational numbers. Um, so the directions show all steps. Try to rewrite expressions as a single rational number. So you need to show all work. You need to circle your answers here. If you show up tomorrow with something that just says like 7, I'm not going to accept it. Um, please make sure you show all works. The odd problems are very similar to the even problems. So what you should do is do an odd problem in the video, pause the video, and then try and do an even problem. Rewind the video, rewatch the odd if you have to. So uh, first one, 80 plus negative 22 plus, uh, sorry, negative 22 and 4 fifteenths. First, it's always a good idea when you have something like this to try and break apart this mixed number. So we'll do 80 plus negative 22, keep your negative sign, right? That was negative, plus and negative 4 fifteenths. Remember, if you have a mixed number like this, both parts, the whole number and fraction, are negative. So 80 plus negative 22, this is a DSSL problem, right? So we're different signs subtract. So 80 plus negative 22 should give me a positive 58. Why is it positive? Because I had more positives. Um, so 58 plus negative 4 fifteenths. Where did I get my negative? I just kept it from above. So now, how do I work this? Well, I have to borrow one whole from 58, so I can actually subtract this. So 58 becomes 57. The whole number that I'm borrowing is a positive 15 over 15, because this is really 1, and 57 plus 1 would give me 58, so I really haven't changed that number, plus negatives, keep my negative, 4 fifteenths. Now, this right here um, is a DSSL problem in itself. Um, 15 plus negative 4 gives you positive 11 because you had more positives. So we should get 57 plus 15 plus negative 4 gives me 11 fifteenths. And your answer is 57. And you get to slap these together because they're the same time, same signs, and 11 fifteenths. So to show your answer, you're going to say 57 and 11 fifteenths. And you're going to neatly and nicely circle it. All work should be shown right now, just like I have. You should have that circled, that circled, that crossed off. All work should be shown. Pause this video, try and do number two. Number three, you got one fifth plus 20.3 minus negative three fifths. So first of all, let's go ahead and change this to plus positive. This should look very familiar from your notes, hopefully. One fifth um, plus uh, 20.3 plus uh, five and three fifths. Let's use the community property to rewrite this. One fifth plus five and plus three fifths plus 20.3. You see what I did there? I just kind of already broke apart my mixed number of one five and three fifths. So really I could um, see that I'm just going to add one fifth and three fifths. So one fifth and three fifths is four fifths. In fact, let me write that in a different color for you guys. Um, four fifths. Right, plus five, which is the same thing as five and four fifths, but I'm I broke it apart for a reason, and the reason hopefully is that you can see, hey, I can add the five and the twenty now. So I get uh, four fifths plus twenty-five point three. Now this twenty-five point three, and we're going to bring this over here. Yes, draw that arrow, do all that stuff. Um, is going to start off as, hey, I got four fifths plus. 25.3. Well, what is 25.3? It's 25. And what's the point 0.3? It's 3 tenths. So here we need to find common denominators. So I got 3 tenths. I got 4 fifths. Ah, I'm going to multiply this guy by 2. Multiplying that by 2 gives you 8 over 10 plus 25 plus 3 tenths. Hopefully you see, hey, I want to add the 8 tenths and 3 tenths. You could, you could rewrite it if you want to. Um, but hopefully you realize, hey, that's 11 tenths plus 25. And 11 tenths is equal to 1 and 1 tenth. And so you're going to add 1 and 1 tenth plus 25. So um, here's what I want to do. I want to scoot this up a little bit. Yeah, 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 Mr. Mason's telling you to erase. Oh, oh well, you'll live. 8 tenths plus 25. Um, in fact, let's use the commuter property so you can see this here. Instead of saying plus 25, let's say plus 3 tenths plus 25 and this gives me 11 tenths plus 25. Now I got a little bit more space to say this is 1 and 1 tenth plus 25 and that's how you get to your answer of 26 and 1 tenth. 
So we'll circle that nice and neat. Um, I should see some erasing on your paper because hopefully you wrote down what I wrote down and all that stuff. Pause the video and try and do number four. You have a plus positive and plus negative. Um, that negative is going to be important to that problem. Number five. Um, so start off by saying, hey, one plus negative three-fourths, and we keep that the same. So one plus negative three-fourths. Let's break this apart right now. Gives me plus negative 12 plus negative um, one-fourth. Let's use the commutative property of addition to rewrite this. So one plus three-fourths. Sorry, this is negative. That's so important. The negative sign is super important here in this problem. Negative three-fourths plus negative one-fourth plus negative 12. So negative three-fourths plus negative uh, one-fourth is an SSAK. So negative three plus negative one gives me negative four-fourths plus negative 12. So basically what I did, I combined these guys and got negative four-fourths. Um, what is negative four over four? That's just negative one. So this number right here gave me negative one. So one plus negative one plus negative 12. Hopefully you realize, hey, these guys are opposites. They cancel out. I get zero plus negative 12. And zero plus negative 12 is just negative 12. If I were you, I'd pause the video right now and try and look at number six. Number six is a tad bit difficult. Make sure you have a plus negative here. I'll help you out by writing it out first and saying, hey, it would help to separate these whole numbers. So negative two plus negative two fifths plus three plus positive one fourth because that was positive plus negative three fifths. Probably use the community property to get that negative three fifths and that negative two fifths closer to one another. So what is the community property of addition? This should be very simple. Uh, it states the order of addition can be changed and we will still get the same sum. So what does that look like mathematically? 2 plus 5 equals 7 is the same thing as 5 plus 2 equals 7 and flip-flop stuff around, I'll still get the same answer. Backside. Um, so I'm still doing the odds, so that means I'll work on this side of the paper. So negative 5 and 2 ninths plus, uh, let's use the community property of addition, 5 and 2 ninths plus 3.7. So hopefully right off the bat you're like, oh, thank you so much, Mr. Mason. This is a super easy problem. These are two opposites, so they cancel out to zero plus 3.7 and you're done. It was, that was that simple, 3.7. Um, this one gonna be a little bit harder. No, you don't need to change that to a negative sign. You start off by saying negative five and five sevenths. Use the community property plus negative three and two sevenths plus eight. Um, it would be extremely helpful to break these guys apart. So let's say negative five plus negative five sevenths plus negative three plus negative two sevenths plus eight um, and then use community properties so negative five plus negative three plus negative five sevenths oops sorry I have to write that smaller it's a plus sign negative five sevenths plus negative two sevenths plus eight and hopefully you should be able to say hey something's gonna happen there um, so that problem is not done by the way Number 11, uh, 2 and 1 fifth plus negative 1.8 um, plus positive 2 and 3 fifths. So 2 plus 1 fifth plus 2 plus 3 fifths um, plus negative 1.8. What did I do there? I just used the community property right off the bat and, and broke apart my mixed numbers. Um, let's use the community property again. 2 plus 2 plus 1 fifth plus three-fifths, plus negative 1.8, oops, eight, not one, one, eight. Notice how I still have my negative sign. Uh, two and two, that gives me four. 
4 plus 1 fifth plus 3 fifths. They already have common denominators, so that gives me 4 fifths plus negative 1.8. And what is um, negative 1.8? Well, it's a negative 1, right? And it's 8 over 10, right? Plus negative 8 over 10. Now, what is negative 8 over 10? Hopefully, if you realize, you can simplify negative 8 over 10 to that's negative 4 fifths. So plus negative 1 plus negative 4 fifths. Let's bring everything else down that we had. 4 plus 4 fifths. And now let's use the community property to rewrite this problem. So 4 plus negative 1, right? I took my whole numbers and I said, let's put those next to each other. Plus 4 fifths plus negative four fifths. I did that because I said, hey, I got fractions, let's put those next to each other. Hopefully you realize, hmm, these cancel out because four plus negative four is DSSL. Those are opposites, that's zero. And then this, four plus uh, negative one gives you three. Three plus zero is three is your answer. All right, um, I'm gonna do number 13. I'm going to leave you with number 15 to do on your own. So number 13 should be uh, very familiar from the front side. It's 15 plus, break this apart, negative 3 um, plus negative 2 fifths. Again, always just breaking apart those mixed numbers so we can operate a little bit more easily with them. Um, 15 plus negative 3 is a DSSL. That gives you negative 12 plus negative 2 fifths. And a problem like this, we have to borrow it gives me negative, oh wait, no, why don't we have to borrow? Mr. Mason was so wrong. I don't have to borrow on this problem. Why don't I have to borrow? Because they're the same sign, look at that. So I just get to slap them together. Very good catch there. So 12, negative 12 and 2 fifths is your answer. Watch out for that, negative 12 and 2 fifths. Again, this is different than say a problem like, um, Sorry, I'm trying to scroll back up. Difference and say like a problem like number one, um, I could not slap these guys together because they were different signs. That was positive and that was negative. Now on the problem I just did, I can slap them together because that's negative and that's negative. All right, I'll start number 15 for you and then you guys can do it. So um, plus a positive. So we've got, uh, let's use community property right off the bat, one eighth plus um, 2 plus 3 eighths plus 10.3. Um, and really, 1 eighth and 3 eighths should get put next to each other. So we got 1 eighth plus 3 eighths plus 2 plus 10.3. This gives you 4 eighths plus 2 plus 10.3. And hopefully you can recognize, you could do this a couple ways, right? I could go ahead and change 4 eighths to a decimal, or I could change 10.3 to a fraction. I think changing 4 eighths to a decimal would be easier, because that's just 0.5 plus 2 plus 10.3. They're all the same signs, so we can just add them all up. So this is going to be basically, okay, this right here is 2.5 plus 10.3. In fact, it might be easier just to add the whole numbers first. This could be 12.3 plus 0.5, and 0.5 plus 12.3 gives you 12.8, right? I can prove it to you by lining it up if I want. 12.3 plus 0.5 gives you 12.8. So there's your answer, 12.8. Um, this homework is hard. Please make sure you're keeping track of your integers, your negative signs, your fractions, like denominators, unlike denominators, same signs, different signs, whole bunch to keep track of. Make sure you're showing all work. If you have questions, please call me. I have class tonight, so call me after 9 o'clock.